Here we go. years ago we, we launched it two years ago but as you probably know with uh, any any boat especially a new one you never stop building it until probably the day you sell it and right. this is this, this boat's no exception we're still refining it and you're 74 overall 74 overall yeah yeah and and we're, we're uh, 64 on the deck yeah and we have a, a draft of six feet yeah with a center board that takes us down to 12 foot six Wow. When it's working. Right, I heard. But we don't need to, you know, we, <laughs> we don't, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> we don't need negative stuff, you're right. No, absolutely. All <laughs> now, right. I'm just making, I want people to feel sorry for me. So, oh. so, so they say, well, let's just slow. Well, we haven't got a centre board. All right. Come on, you've got a washer and dryer. You've got a lot of things other than <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. stuff that makes you go quickly. I know. Heavy things. And you had this built just for the two of you. So you guys that could take it. this uh, around absolutely, the world. Absolutely, yeah. We, we, we love schooners because um, uh, I've always I always loved schooners since I was a, a, a small child. I read a book. Um, uh, uh, I don't know whether in America you've heard of Swallows and Amazons. Yes. Right. Well, the guy who. Oh, wrote I loved that, that book as a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the same guy wrote a book about a schooner, and I read that book when I was about nine, and that lodged in my head ever since. And I thought, one day I'm going to own a schooner, because they have some certain magic to them, it's beautiful magic. balance to them, yeah, and and surprisingly easy to sail. Uh, we had this boat built in England. And a lot of Europeans think, you're mad. Why would you have two masts when you can have one? Because it's much easier. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's easier to sail to, more fun. And the one thing about schooners, they, you meet a different class of people. All right? The people in, in, that own schooners are something special, somebody special. And we feel like we're part of this rather subculture that we really enjoy being, I being agree. involved with. Yeah, yeah, that's why we, we had our schooners built, because who wants to go sailing on a sloop or a catch <laughs> or a yawl? Yeah, exactly. I know, other than the Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> right. the schooners have that, that special place. And, and as I say, it has surprisingly kicked an awful lot of doors open for us. We can turn up in various places. And because you've got a schooner, would you like to moor next to us? Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on aboard. Yeah, help yourself. Come on. Right. And your deck prisms are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> well, that's called a lemon squeezer. It lets a lemon light. squeezer. Let's squeeze a, a lemon squeezer. Lemon squeezer. Lemon squeezer. Let's a lot of light into. There we we have go. a workshop down there where <laughs> I can make things. Well, actually, where I can repair things. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, now this is our cockpit. Have a, uh, uh, a nice large wheel so we can sit at the side and uh, hold off the wheel and, and, and see where you're going. Oh yeah! And, and it's uh, it's a hydraulic uh, steering system. Um, uh, that was a big argument with my wife and I. She said you wanted something you could feel the um, feel the, the rudder, and I said, well, quite frankly, how many times do you actually use that facility? Said, because most of the time when you're sailing lost at long distance, you're on the autopilot. Right. So it's doing the work for you. The only time you really use the wheel is when you're manoeuvring tight spaces in the marina. Yeah. And that's when you need hydraulics. So yeah. look here with no feel. I don't care. It, 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 it's, uh, it, it's very easy to sail. Sail with your foot. I like it. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, no, you don't. You just press the button. And oh, well, right, 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 right. Um, uh, and it's, it's uh, as I say, it's set up for us to uh, sail. Because um, uh, basically, when there's two of you on board, essentially you are sailing single handed. We do three on, three off watches, especially overnight. During the day, obviously, it's a bit, bit sort of looser. Um, essentially, everything on the on the, on the schooner is self-tacking. So, um, uh, except for the, the head cell, the head cell we have these uh, two black uh, sheets that operate the head cell, and they are have got a bit our power winches. Okay. Because they do get a bit tight, especially if you've got a lot of grey hair. Right, the, I, I get it. I'm... So everything else is self-tacking. So we can actually set the, the autopilot to say tack. Oh, First nice! It'll, it'll tack onto the same angle of wind that you've already just coming off, <laughs> and all we have to do then, especially if you're on your own, is just flip one sheet off and flip, flip the other one on and press the button, and off you go again. Very cool! And that's all good. 
because it's working. Right, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah. so all electronics, you know, they're yeah. all sort of, that would give you a bit of, a bit of, a bit of fun. So, and if I remember, um, I'm looking at your website, you have a fully roached mainsail, right? Uh, fully battened is... Fully battened, both, both the foresail and the mainsail. Foresail and a mainsail. And the mainsail, and the, 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 the foresail's got a high roach. Okay. Uh, because it's very sort of on the curve at the top, so it's a very powerful sail. Right. Um, and of course it's very efficient because so when um, we we're talking about a foresail versus us having a staysail, their foresail is attached to their foremast. Yeah. And so it looks like a mainsail on a foremast. Yeah, that's co absolutely correct. A lot of people get mixed up and they don't understand schooners. They'll call that the mainmast and this is the mizzen. Uh, so sorry, yeah. you know. Get, get, You're mizzen something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very true. All right. Yeah, so, so that's, um, that's, that, that's, uh, that's that. I, I, I do, again, it's a very, power, very powerful rig. If you have a bit of roach on the sail, it probably puts maybe 20% yeah. Um, we'd like to have had a gaff on there and have a Marconi rig here, but having a gaff with just the two of us was really asking for you know a, a, a problem. So yeah. we thought well, let's make life simple. It doesn't look as pretty, you know, but you, you have to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of prettiness, when we say about this particular design about it's Dutch design, uh, built in the UK, and the design brief was that you have to have rowaway factor. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Is when you're rowing away, you're in a boat, you're looking backwards. <laughs> okay, and you say, "Gee, that's a nice boat." And that's written on the top of all the plans. <laughs> Row away factor, and this is the whole idea about this because I, I I paint pictures for a living. I paint. And they're the beautiful. Uh, she gave me so, a little preview of one well, of them. Down yeah, there. that's what I look at. You know, I paint, I paint, I've painted lots of beautiful yachts, and there's no way could I sail on a boat that wasn't pretty. And I don't care about how fast it goes. It's all about looking good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Image is everything. I mean, I sound like I'm being very insincere, but no, the, the truth no, no, is, no. is that really it, it, uh, it's like having the sense that it's drinking wine out of a polystyrene cup or out of a glass. It's the same wine, but why does it taste different when it's in a nice glass? And that's the, the, the you know, the Or the in a beautiful place. Oh, exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you drink wine out of a plate? I'm sorry. <laughs> a plate, a plate, oh my God. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that was the design brief. And we, we'd uh, seen a design of this uh, yacht, actually it was originally designed with both of steel. And the Dutch are very good at building steel yachts, but we didn't want a steel boat. I've had the, this, this, I always have this, this lovely feel that wood has, is more organic, yeah. and uh, and it has a lovely sound to it. Uh, all this is a sense. This is a composite construction that is built of Douglas fir, and it's probably about this thick, uh, and it's got fiberglass on either side. And they actually build the boat upside down. Um, yeah, me and Louise, we had a conversation about this because we. Yeah, we had a conversation. Yeah. So we're, we were of laminated ribs, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we're strip length, but she was not built upside down. And we only yeah. have fiberglass on the outside, yeah, not yeah. the inside. That's a, that sort of, in a sense, allows the, the wood, wood to, to breathe, breathe a little bit. Exactly. And be a little, but, yeah. but this, the, 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 the uh, Douglas fir, it's, it's actually, um, in a sense, a, 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 uh, an infill between the, the, the two fiberglass skins. Yeah. So we have the sense, we have the, the, the um, uh, feel of a wooden boat, yeah. and the sound of a wooden boat, but we have the, the, uh, the easy maintenance yeah. of a, a fiberglass boat. Uh, and it's a very, very um, inexpensive way of actually building a non-production boat, because you, when you build them upside down, you use any old sort of trashy wood to make the frames, you bend all the wood over it, glue it all together, put the fiberglass over, take it outside the shed, turn it the right way, rip all this junk stuff out and fiberglass the inside. There's three layers of plywood deck and, and uh, fiberglass and teak on top, so you've got a very strong monocoque hull and the, you don't have any frames in it. You can put the, the bulkheads anywhere you like. Hmm. The only places that you have to put extra strengthening, of course, is where the chain plates go down. Right. So extra laminated beams going going down there um, and, um, and that's about it really. And so. Uh, and it's, uh, so it took a long time to build. It took us about eight years. We kept kept running out of money. We, we signed the order form, I think, three weeks before the Fannie Mae thing hit the... Oh, hit the, boy, yeah. Hit, and, of course, all my customers disappeared to the wood, uh, into the woodwork. And, uh, and, uh, and so we had to slow the project up. Uh, and as I say, I kept running out of money because uh, uh, I was trying to keep my business going and, and, uh, and, uh, and try and keep the project alive. And a few times I nearly gave up. I said, no, after all, it's just a toy, you know, I don't have a heart attack over this. 
But my wife said, yeah, keep going, you know, it's been a lifetime ambition to, to do what you want to do. And what I wanted to, want to do, and still are in the process of doing, is actually selling to Tahiti. That was my main, main angle. And the reason for Tahiti, I saw uh, Marlon Brando in a film called Mutiny on the Bounty yeah. when I was a kid. And, and Hull, uh, where I'm from, was, uh, was where the original Bounty was built. The yard is still there, the, 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 the yard owner's house is still there in Hull. Um, uh, and it's actually now part of the Hull uh, Maritime Museum Research Centre. Um, and uh, they built the, um, uh, the bounty there, and she was originally called the Berthia. Uh, and then of course she was taken over by the Admiralty and uh, and then Blygos involved. And um, uh, and then the other th interesting thing with this, we actually sold to Lunenburg yeah. this year. And the reason for going for Lunenburg is the bounty connection. Because when I saw this film with, with Marlon Brando in it, um, uh, we were given, uh, I think it was about 1966 or something like that, uh, we were given a little catalogue of all about how the film was made. And in the back of this book was a photograph of the bounty sticking out of this shed in Lunenburg, where they built a replica for that film. Wow. All right? And then, the, then we thought, well, I've got to go and see that, because I've still got this book. It's still in my studio in, 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 uh, in New Zealand. And so it's been one of my treasured pr possessions. Um, and so coming from Hull, seeing this film, switched me on to the Tahiti thing and then of course I got interested in the story about the bounty and of course the, uh, and Bly. Now I used to sail my original boats out of Whitby which is just a bit further up the coast in Yorkshire and of course uh, in Whitby, just north of Whitby is where Captain Cook came from and, and of course the connection between Captain Cook and Captain Bly, Captain Bly served with Captain Cook and Captain Bly managed when he chucked him off the bounty and sailed all the way from the middle of the Pacific to uh, East Timor, that 3,000 mile trip, he navigated all the way because he was a very highly skilled navigator and he was a highly skilled navigator because Captain Cook taught him an awful lot. So there's a lovely connection between Cook wow. and, and, and Captain Bly. Now the other thing we found when we got to um, uh, Lunenburg is that the shed that they built the bounty in also built a ship called the Rose. That HMS that, Rose? It's called HMS Rose and HMS Rose was uh, built in the same yard as the bounty was in Hull where I'm from and that was eventually uh, used as the film for um, uh, Master and Commander. Commander right? That was a surprise. Yeah. And I thought well, lots of little dots are all joining, uh, joining up here. So it's one of the reasons going up to Lunenburg was, was to uh, go and see this. To me it was like the Holy Grail. This is oh, a ship where that's great. the bounty came out of the Rose and, was, and they're still building uh, wooden ships in there which is really really rather nice so my dad so his our boat is made out of Port Orford cedar yeah and it is made at Port Orford Oregon yeah. he went to Oregon specifically to go to Port Orford and find a forest of the wood yeah and it's all cut down oh. all right let's go oh. see the boat I know okay. <laughs> yes let's go off we go right obviously um uh, we've got a, a, a large navigation uh, chart and sort of thing that you can see you can actually see that from the wheel oh you know, wow Sharp plotter, yeah. Right. Um, and I heard these plotter. floors are cork. It's made of cork. It's actually it's uh, it's laid the same as you do with the teeth. And the the beauty about cork is um, it's actually very it's got a lot of traction on it. So you don't I mean, we can't have carpets in, but the um, uh, cork is it's it's uh, you don't slip on it. So when the boat's healed. That's great. Can, now you probably heard the story about the, the footprints. No, I did not okay. hear the story well, about the, boat's the footprints. Called wolfhound, right? right. Well, we had two wolfhounds on our farm in uh, in in like uh, Irish wolfhounds. Irish wolfhounds. Okay. That, you know, the, when they sit down, they're about this big. Yeah. And we got them left. And they're grey and furry. They're beautiful. Yeah. They don't live very long, which is rather mm -hmm. sad. They're about nine years, ten years is, is about their, their longest. But we had two laughingly for guard dogs and they, they were absolutely monumentally useless as guard dogs but they were great personalities we just loved them to bits and one of them was called Shemus. Shemus loved the, the galley, loved food you know most of it so we asked the boat builder instead of build, putting a like a compass rose on here which is pretty you know, really everybody's got that uh, put these on and he Pitched him. I said, I'm not putting dog prints on the table. He wouldn't even. I said, well, Listen, who's writing the check here? Eventually, I persuaded him to put this, and this is uh, teak end grain. And if you look at it, it actually looks like dog. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the look of a, of a dog paw print. And these are actually a, a replica of a print that my wife took from one of the dogs. So they're actually on, on, on the boat. So the idea is the dog sat there, smells food, walks across the table, okay? Oh, I love that. <laughs> Right now, in here, that's our switch panel. Right. Okay, control panel. Uh, this is one of the engine 
engine axis is through here. Okay. But it's not the main one. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, just replaced the fridge freezers because the ones that we have custom built didn't work very well. So we've got rid of those and got these in. Um, the, the deal was when I, we were leaving the farm, I promised the wife we'd have everything on the, on the boat we had on the farm. So we have a dishwasher there uh bread maker i saw the bread maker <laughs> yeah microwave yeah. And all the rest of the usual stuff because we have a ac power so we can we can run all this um right into here this is our um uh guest cabin now um, i feel a little more air i don't know whether you can see down there but this is another connection in a sense with i'll actually drag it out it might just oh i heard about this 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 is this cannon this is so cool people so cool this cannon it gives you a hernia, apart from the fact that you know, this cannon used to be on Blue Nose, the Canadian fishing schooner. The one with the largest mainsail boom? That is the, it's the very one now each captain would have his own cannon. And this, uh, Angus Walters was the most famous uh, captain of Blue Nose, and this is his grandson's cannon. And he was getting a bit old and his wife was sick and tired of polishing it on the coffee table. So um, it, she decided to sell it. And when we found out, when my wife actually uh, bought it for me as a birthday present, as a surprise, found that, and of course we didn't realise, you are not a, a schooner really, unless you have a cannon. Agreed, <laughs> you agreed. You don't quite cut it in the schooner thing. So we've just had and to have this, that's got this beautiful provenance was just wonderful. And the additional thing we found about this was that this cannon was made in the foundry where the Bounty and the Rose is built. Okay? Oh my and God. It's all oh jeez. And it gets even better. We met up there one of the most lovely guy uh, called Ben uh, uh, Verberg, who was probably the uh, one of the most um, uh, preeminent or eminent um, uh, Canadian model makers. He makes some of the most beautiful models on the planet. And he made this cannon. And he made the carriage, and that is a replica of a uh, of a sort of Nelsonic. Um, uh, well, in fact, you'd probably see a cannon like that on on on, the, on yeah. the Constitution. It's designed and built like that to look like that sort of thing. So, we're very proud to have that. We have a question. Are are we running out of battery uh, power? More, more of a comment. Uh, Bruce Artman wants uh, wants us to fire the cannon. Yeah, Bruce Artman, you're not going to get a fire cannon. But thank you, one of my friends. <laughs> well, one of the my, racers. If in my Netflix. wife was here, well, she, she knows where the gunpowder's are. So <laughs> doesn't trust me with it. So it's probably in the fridge somewhere. So otherwise, it, I would have said absolutely yeah. Okay, well, on we go. This okay. is um, uh, this is our uh, obviously our sort of like snug, if you like. We. The, the design brief up there was that you had to be able to sit down and see the bed weather outside and sit and, and you know in comfort. Yeah. But when it's really at anchor and we want to have a nice evening. Like tonight, like, when yeah. it's thundering and yeah. lightning and this uh, is the yes. snug room. And we, okay. we obviously both, both wife and I are avid readers, and so we've got lots of um, reading stuff. But we have the inevitable TV. So oh, uh, look oh at wow, that. that's okay. pretty cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Um, and so. Uh, Right, and there uh, uh, on the wall, that is a painting I painted of the Bounty probably ooh, 35 years ago. And this is Fletcher Christian returning to um, Tahiti. And I actually, in the days before you could actually freeze frame things, I actually had a videotape of that uh, film and I kept freezing it. So I thought I didn't burn the tape out while I got the, the, you know, the shape of Tahiti to put in the background. So there's a little bit of connection. And that was given to me by my art dealer when uh, he came and flew out and, and met me with it. And he said, I think this belongs on the boat. And he gave it to me as a present because I'd lost it. It had sold years ago. And That's it turned so, out so neat. Really, really nice That's to have so that. That's so great. That's uh, right. so great. Okay, on with the boat. Um, in here we have a sort of what we call a birdie bath. Um, so we can, if you get really cold, you can sit in the in here and and because uh, we have a water maker on board, so we can, we've got enough capacity for that. And a huge water uh, heater, I see. Yeah, we just throw it in the, yeah, in the engine room. <laughs> There's a washing machine behind the door there, so you can, you can see that. Uh, right, that's a. It's got a dryer in it, but quite frankly, the dryers are it's better put one on. Yeah. You know, it ends up looking like a Chinese jug, but you know, okay, the dryer. Master, master. Uh, no. The thing is that this boat has got um, its deck stepped masts, all right? So that the oh, masts sit on the deck. Well, obviously, take the load. Yeah. And generally, have a compression post. Well, the compression post would normally have come through here. Right. So we have this steel box frame, it's all boxed in with wood here, that takes the load through to the keel so we can walk through it. Uh, all right, now this is um, uh, our, on the deck, it's, uh, it looks like a conventional hatch. 
um, but essentially it's, a, it's an escape hatch and we have some ladders here um, got some cloths that they can see, obviously have a bit of a leak occasionally. Um, and you just unclip those as a fire escape. Oh, right. Pull, the, pull those down. And also, in here we have a, uh, like a sun, sun blind, so we have this open uh, yep. bearing. And this way it's got a, like a flat screen. screen. So, oh, that's, that's cool. That's a really con conventional thing. Very cool. Obviously just lock a space. And, and so under here we, we have a, a bow thruster. Oh. Oh. Am I allowed to mention bow thrusters? Yeah, absolutely. Such company, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, and another uh, this nice is the, size on, head, on, yeah, on, on, on sweet. One, yeah, yes. so um, Very uh, cool. And uh, through here is uh, is our uh, another guest cabin. This is where we put our special guests because it's slightly larger. I see. This is the library. Yeah. Well, it's got more books in it. Yeah. Right. Um, actually, I'll just I'll just open this little bit more, a bit more lighted. There you go. Wow. Um, sorry. That is so cool. Okay. And uh, yeah, well, the thing is, for cool, it's actually sometimes it's quite hot. So because it's next to the engine room, this is the main main. Um, well, they got they've still got laundry in here. So we, this is one of the things we do when the yeah. rent port. Um, yeah, if you look at that, we did make a mistake with that because it could probably smell vegetation because we've actually got the garbage bin on the other side of that. We didn't think. That when you put garbage in a hot engine room, oh <laughs> right, a bit, of a, a bit of a wish. So that's a, another design feature we have to do. It's a John Deere, um, and it, uh, it's it's three hundred and twenty horsepower, which gives us about mm, ten knots flat out. Wow! Which, but we don't dry, we don't go at ten knots because six knots gives us one liter. We're obviously, trying to convert that into American, it gives us one liter per mile. Six knots. But if you're doing 10 knots, it's 42 uh, to wow. liters per hour, uh, per, per hour to, to do the same thing. So it's it, it's very, it won't draw a graph and a fuel concept woof, like that. So six knots is basically what we like to to uh, to drive out. So. And I love the modern butterfly hatch. Yeah, very well, nice. we, we could have had, you know, the old fashioned sort, but the, 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 we know they would leak. And again, we've got the same same thing here. So we've got yeah. a fly screen and a sunscreen to come across. All right, so. don't stub your toe on the cannon. You would hear some rather interesting natural <laughs> language if I did that. I'll tell you. <laughs> this okay. is so beautiful. I'll just show you in here quickly. This is, this is the, yeah, well, obviously, our wet weather look with other stuff. But here is our compression post that takes the load through to our centerboard casing uh, that, that we haven't got at the front because it's a, a different different design. Okay, yeah. so we can actually go through it. Now Louise and I actually um, we when we designed this boat we we gave the designer uh, an outside uh, idea of what so he designed the volumetric shape. But we had a farm and we drew the plan of the interior of this boat on the to full size on the barn floor to the inch. Oh my goodness. We bought toilets and things to make sure the doors swing. Wow. And, and that that's uh, that was uh, an important so we knew what would work and we measured everything up exactly. So can we the, go to the front of the back? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The front, oh my god. Yeah. So the deck tour. No, don't worry. We we'll allow that. We call it front sometimes as well. Plywood construction, clinker built. Sailing so, dinghy? Sailing dinghy, yeah, Aww. she's got a mast here, it's gaff rigged, um, and we, uh, we we sail that quite often. And we lift it off the deck with, with this. Gotcha. Yeah, we just we just attach it to a, there's a, let's see, there's a hook on the mast yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Pass it on there, pull it down, and that, that lifts it off. And that, um, we have two dogs, one was called Seamus and one was called Paddy. Seamus and Paddy, the two Seamus dogs. And Paddy. Yeah. Now the connection between the deck thing is that Seamus was very uh, lovely and decorative, but pretty useless. Uh, uh, so that is Seamus. Seamus. Paddy was the intelligent dog and was useful and all the rest of it. And Dizzy was told, and this is Paddy. Okay. Oh God. Because <laughs> so this is the boat that we go shopping in. Oh my goodness. That's great. Okay. Nice. I know it's a bit silly. <laughs> there you go. Another one of the uh, lemon squeezer. Lemon squeezer. And. Another paw prints. <laughs> okay, as I say, uh, my wife took a, a plaster cast of one of the dog's paws and then we used that as the model to all, to all this. Obviously, conventional um, windows up here, but uh, deck lockers that we... Where the fenders are a bit dirty, but they anyway, were the fenders all yep. down in the other side there. Electric windlass, cable tier here, and um, uh, there's Harkin roller reefing stuff. That, we operate all that from the, 
the uh, cockpit. So. What do you think, Nick? So Nick is uh, he's been working on her boat. Would you like to go out on that bass for it? Well, Looks a little easier, yeah. doesn't it? Nice yeah. anti-skid on the top. Now it's, now it's getting some nice handles out there. That's nice. I still, I still got, I still hold on to something. Even yeah, the, absolutely. The rest of the summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got the uh, the line set up. That's for our, great. And what would you call what do you call the forward most sail on this boat? Uh, we call it a head sail. Okay, and the or second you, one. This one's a stay sail. This, stay this sail. is a, a club boom stay sail. Oh, okay, gotcha. So that attaches on over yeah. to here. We just wind, oh, we just wind it out onto the end of there. Yep. And again, it's self tucking. Yep. Uh, as I say, the head sail needs to be hauled round the, um, the stay sail. Yep. Um, and of course, you can reef everything properly. Reef the two um, head sails from the from the cockpit. Uh, everything else is is manhandled. We, these are all uh, manual winches. The idea is just to try and keep fit. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, illusion, you know, that I'm not grey-haired, and right. you, know, you know, so we have to wind these things. <laughs> wind um, these and we use things. these things. These are rather. These are an interesting thing. These are. We use this to. We have a uh, an asymmetric, and uh, the asymmetric goes up on a tube and then you pull the sock out, yep. you know. Well, you've got to fasten that to the, the that tube to the deck because if the wind gets in it, you're going for a ride. Right, right. So yeah. a lot of people forget to fasten it down and we fasten it down. With so where do you, and where do you fasten the, the tack we, line to? The, well, there's, there's, three, there's, three, there's three lines to it. Well, actually, it's the halyard. Yeah. And there's this one, is the one that we use as a sheet. That's you, the sheet. And when you jive it, you let it All fly, the like way, fly yep. right around that and hold it in there. Just like ours that we will be Same doing. Thing. If, and the and the, right. uh, the 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 uh, other end of it is is uh, tacked down there on on this line. Oh, uh, okay, yep. And we we, we we tie tie it off, and then we put it around the winch to really pull it in tight. Yep. Uh, on that on the caption there. Perfect. So, um, okay, I think that's that's about that's about it really. I think it's, well, it's, it's quite you. simple. Oh, this has my been pleasure. so wonderful. I hope you come by in our boat and see our I little will. simplified boat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple, like. Well, this you know. is this is. Exploring places by sea. You arrive. We just going in the other day. We know when we did the the um, uh, parade of sail. Mm -hmm. I've never been into Baltimore. I haven't been in yet. But to come in on a boat. Yeah. No parking meters. <laughs> You're making me emotional because it's just. It is just so neat, and it's so neat to hear your enthusiasm about oh. all of this. Well, the thing really is, I, 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 every time anybody, especially youngsters, you know, I say, don't wait till you're my age. There's a yeah. whole city out there sailing around the world doing it. Like I'm, these guys. Yeah. Like Kukla in front of us. Exactly. Yeah. They're, they're doing it. And, and we meet young families. People like to find excuses not to do it. You, you, if you're going to have excuses not to do it, you're never going to do it. Yeah. Find excuses why not to do it. Get out there and get on with it. You yeah. know, and, 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 and enjoy it. Especially while you're young. Don't wait till you're. You never know when. Remember it's, that. Exactly. Don't wait till you're old and decrepit <laughs> and you're. You know, and you've got all sorts of issues. And yeah, yeah. But what do you think's wrong with your oh, leg? Oh, exactly. oh, yeah, yeah. Off the record, we'll oh, go there. Oh, what's that, Jen? <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> I knew somebody was going to ask. All right, well, we're going to say goodbye. And um, come watch the start of this schooner race tomorrow at 11 o'clock if you have access to a boat. If not, there might be some tickets left on our 9.30 uh, schooner race watch. By the way, we have two schooners. We're going to be out there confusing the heck out of you. Right, on, well, I'll uh, be adding to the, the confusion. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed Stephen Dews and his beautiful schooner, Wolfhound. Nice.